Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with whole shrimp potstickers. That's right, they say if it's not broke, don't fix it, which really is great advice for almost everything except cooking. For example, there's nothing wrong with the traditional method of making potsticker fillings, which no matter what meat or seafood you're talking about, it's always ground or chopped very fine. But I was craving some shrimp potstickers, and I wanted to see what would happen if I tried to do it with a whole shrimp. And not to spoil the ending, but what happened was wonderful and delicious things. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by making this very, very simple dough, which begins by taking a wooden spoon and making a well in the center of some all-purpose flour, into which we will add some salts, followed by some very warm water, like 130 degrees or so, give or take. And what we'll do is pour that water in and start stirring with our wooden spoon. And if you're wondering, why do we make a well in the center? What good does that do? Well, probably nothing. And that would be sort of a leftover ritual from when we didn't use bowls. So what I'm trying to say is you really don't have to make a well. But what you do have to do is stir this until it all comes together into a shaggy dough, at which point we'll transfer everything to the work surface. And then you know the drill. We will press and push and squeeze and knead this all together, adding more flour if necessary, until we have a very soft, but not super sticky dough. And then once we do reach that magical moment, We'll go ahead and knead and roll and stretch this for a few minutes until we have something soft, smooth, and fairly elastic, at which point we'll cover it with some plastic and let it sit out at room temp for about an hour before we try to use it, which will give our dough time to relax and for that flour to hydrate. And while we're waiting for that little bit of magic to happen, we can go ahead and season our shrimp. And if you are going to try to make a whole shrimp pot sticker, you really do need to use these large sized shrimp. Right, these are called 1620s, which means you get 16 to 20 in a pound. And yes, these definitely also need to be peeled and deveined. And then to our big, beautiful raw shrimp, we will add a whole bunch of sliced green onions, as well as some finely minced garlic. At which point we will season this very simply with some soy sauce, a hint of sesame oil, and a little kiss of sriracha, or of course a similar hot sauce of your choice. And that's it, we'll simply give this a mix until the shrimp are thoroughly and evenly coated. And as you may have noticed, we're going with a very minimalist approach to the seasoning. All right, we really do want those big, beautiful, sweet shrimp to be the star of the show. So we're just adding a few things to enhance the flavor and zero things to cover it up. And then what we'll do once everything's been combined is throw a piece of plastic on that and then pop them in the fridge for about a half hour before we wrap them up. And sure, a little longer is okay, but we don't want to do long marinations with shrimp. Otherwise, that salt in the soy can start to change the texture. And not in a good way. So ideally, we'll pop that in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And then the only other thing we need to prep would be a very simple rice vinegar dipping sauce, which for me is just seasoned rice vinegar with a little touch of soy sauce, plus a spoon of sambal, which is just a ground chili sauce. And then last but not least, some sliced green onions. And that's it. We'll give it a stir and simply set that aside until needed. And then assuming our dough is rested for an hour and our shrimp is marinated for about 30 minutes, we can move on to forming our pot stickers which means we'll unwrap our now rested dough and then we'll cut off a small piece and roll it into a ball. And by the way, at this point, the dough is still going to be pretty soft and sticky. So feel free to use as much extra flour as you need to be able to shape and roll these out, which is why we never want to add too much flour at the beginning. All right, it's always much harder trying to adjust a dough that's too dry as opposed to just adding a little more flour to one that's too wet. And then what we'll do after rolling that into a ball and pressing it out into a disc is take a rolling pin and roll this out into a circle about an eighth of an inch thick. And for the first few, we're just guessing about the size and the amount of dough. And as you continue to make these, you can dial that in. But anyway, once we have rolled our dough out into a circle, we'll dip our finger into some cold, fresh water and we'll moisten the edge. At which point, we'll take a spoon and place one shrimp right down in the middle, as well as applying a little bit extra of those green onions and garlic from the bowl. And when we do pot sticker fillings with ground meat, these are easy to pick up and shape in your hand because that filling is flexible. And you can actually make some decent looking pleats and folds. But with this method and using the whole shrimp, we're not able to do that. So we're basically just going to leave this on the table and just press together a seam across the top, trimming away any excess dough from the ends, which yes, you can totally use again. Just push that back into the ball of dough. And that's it once we have that extra dough trimmed off. We will make sure our edges of dough are perfectly sealed. And then if we want, we could do some kind of decorative pinching or crimping, which I'm making a half-hearted attempt to do here. 
And really, as long as that edge is sealed, you really don't need any kind of crimping on this side. Although I do like to do a little bit, and not just out of habit, but also because it might help grab onto a little more of our dipping sauce when we eventually serve these up. But ultimately, it really doesn't matter appearance-wise, because we're going to brown and crisp up the flat side and serve that side up, so we're really not going to see this side anyway. And usually with this kind of thing, each one you do gets a little bit better. But this time, for me at least, that didn't happen. I think each one got a little worse. But did I care? Not at all. But anyway, I went ahead and rolled and folded up six. And then what we'll do once those are set is head to the stove, where I have a nonstick pan set over medium-high heat, in which I drizzled just a little bit of oil. And what we'll do is place our whole shrimp pot stickers in flat side down, with those beautifully crimped edges facing up. And what we'll do is let those cook over medium high for about one minute before adding a little bit of butter. And the reason I like to add it now versus heating it up in the pan to begin with is because I don't want that butter to brown and take on that nutty kind of toasted flavor. All right, basically I just want it to taste like butter. And no, butter is not a traditional pot sticker ingredient, but I find it pairs really well here with the shrimp. And then once our pan's been buttered, we'll let this cook for maybe 30 seconds or so or until those flat bottoms of our pot stickers are golden brown. And the only real way to tell is to take a peek. Oh yeah, that's looking good. And then what we'll do to finish these is transfer in a couple tablespoons of water and then quickly pop on the lid. And we will let our dumplings steam for about two minutes. All right, shrimp cook fast and steam is really, really hot. So these are not going to take a long time. But of course, depending on the size of your shrimp and how big or small you made these things, your times may vary. And that's it. After a few minutes, most of our water will have been evaporated. And if everything goes according to plan, our pot stickers should look like this. And those bottoms should be even more golden brown and beautiful. And even though I didn't make the most beautiful pleated edges in the world, after these things are steamed and that dough tightens up, they always look pretty good. But anyway, like I said, it's not going to matter because we're going to pull them off and serve these with that beautiful golden brown side up. Along with, of course, some of our super simple rice vinegar dipping sauce. And then when it comes to how to eat these, you could use a fork, but that would be a horrible mistake. Since when you went to cut them in half, all those beautiful, sweet, amazing juices would run out onto the plate and lost forever. So I highly recommend we pick these up and eat them with our hands. So that way, when we take that first bite, all those beautiful, sweet, amazing, flavorful juices squirt into our mouth instead. Which is why we really do want to suck when we take that first bite. And if you're thinking, what about the second bite? You just sucked out all the juice. Well, don't worry, because as we dip that second half, our vinegar sauce is going to fill the cavity, as our dumpling dough has basically formed a small cup, and we're going to pop that second bite into our mouth, and it's going to be every bit as juicy as the first one. All right, so we're talking basically a simple two-step procedure. The old suck and bite, followed by the old dip and sip. And that, my friends, concludes today's lesson for how to eat a whole shrimp pot sticker in two perfect bites. Oh, and I said earlier that if you want to make these, you have to use these large shrimp. But I just realized you could probably put two small shrimp together. And I'm thinking everything else should still work. And yes, if you wanted to brown and crisp up both sides of these, that would be fine. But one of my favorite things about pot stickers is the contrast between that browned crispy dough and that softer, chewier steam texture, which is more pasta-like. But anyway, that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the Marge Simpson of your pot stickers filled with shrimp, son. But like I said, having those two different textures is one of my favorite things about this. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling whole shrimp pot stickers. I'm not sure if this is what they mean when they say the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. But when it comes to a shrimp pot sticker, I definitely think a whole shrimp is greater than the sum of a bunch of ground up parts. So for that reason and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.